Hi, I'm Ollie. And I'm Alicia. And we just thought we'd do a quick video tour of our recent five bed HMO project that we've done in Crawley. So here we've got five bedrooms. The two bedrooms we've got downstairs have got a shared separate toilet and separate shower room. So as you can see, we're standing in the hallway where before the front door used to be here, we moved that backwards. So we then made use of the porch space. So we've put the downstairs toilet in what was the porch. Where we had a downstairs toilet before in the original property, we've changed that into a shower room um, for the downstairs two bedrooms to share. We, we've kept them separate as well so that if one person's in the shower, the other person can still use the toilet, which um, when we've been doing viewings, people think that's a really, really good idea. Also, we've used um, the cupboard space to put a, a washing machine in as well, just to utilize that extra space. We've got under the stairs cupboard space as well, and we've also got a cupboard opposite that, which houses all the boiler, the fuse board, the gas, um, gas meter, and all that sort of stuff as well. So obviously now sat in the kitchen, what was before quite a small kitchen, we expanded where, where before we had an L-shaped lounge and we used some of that space to expand the kitchen out. So we've got in here enough cupboard, uh, sorry, cupboard space to have six tenants, um, even though there's five rooms because one room might be for a couple. Um, we've obviously got a double oven so that if two tenants are cooking different things at you know, different temperatures, they can both cook at the same time. We've got two integrated fridge freezers, so everyone's got ample space for um, their food and um, they each get their own shelf, but there's more space available to them. Um, so we've, we've given more than what is the standard. We obviously then got this breakfast bar, which can seat four people normally, but if tenants wanted to, they could move the sofa across and they could have you know, if they were having a, a small dinner party or something, um, or they wanted to sit together, and we provide two extra um, bar stools that are fold away that we keep under the stairs that everyone could eat if they wanted to eat at the same time. Um, we then added a relaxation area, a lounge area, um, with a sofa, TV, and so people can have somewhere to come and sit and watch a program. Um, so we fit, we've tried to fit everything in that people would want. Um, by using the space creatively um, and like I said we moved, we expanded the, the kitchen to be able to do that. And everything was thought out ahead of time, so for example on the breakfast bar we've got USB sockets and a wired internet ethernet cable uh, port so that if people want to work at the desk they can. By the couch we've got plug sockets down there so that people can charge their phone if they're watching TV everything has been thought out ahead of time at the design stage. Yeah, so where people might think that you think of the, fur the furniture layout last, we actually think about it first. So we plan everything using an online um, room designer and we can type in the, type, the measurements of each of the furniture and really work out where everything goes. So as Ollie said, with, with the electrics, they come first. With these, these lights that are above the breakfast bar, you wouldn't be able to put them in at a later date if it was a second thought because the electrics already been done, the plaster's already been laid, um, and it would create more work. So by thinking about everything first means that we can save time and money um, by having it all done in the correct order. So another thing in this room is um, we've put PIR lights in in, um, in communal areas as well. So what that does is like a motion sensor light. So when um, it picks up people, it obviously turns the light on and then after a certain amount of time if there's no movement it turns it off. This just basically reduces the cost of the house, it's more energy efficient. But what we actually did was also put a, a cutout switch so that the sensor can be turned off so that if people were watching TV and they wanted the, the lights dimmed they could do that without whenever they move the lights springing on. So we try to think about what it's like to live here and the kinds of things the tenants are going to do and create the house around that. So again, as you can see, the mood lighting or the atmospheric lighting is on a separate switch to the main light so that these can be on or off so they can create different moods, different atmospheres depending on what the tenant is wanting to do. And of course, with a HMO, uh, the landlord needs to provide all the cutlery, microwave, pots and pans, etc, etc. So everything is in in the kitchen in its place, ready for people to move in. So another thing that we've added in is an induction hob, which is energy saving, because it only uses the energy where the pan is, rather than heat escaping around the sides and heating up a plate that's not being used, it will only heat the area that's actually in contact with the frying pan or the saucepan or whatever. 
So again, it's to save energy, save money. So we're in our first bedroom, bedroom A. Every bedroom has a keyless lock, so um, you can type in your code. You've got codes, a fob, and a card to get into the room. We've got sound insulation on every single wall that is internal. So we've tried to reduce the sound going throughout the house. So in, living in an HMO, sound is going to be a problem with lots of different people living together. So what we have, we've addressed that by putting insulation in all the walls, particularly this room, it's important because this is the room that comes off the kitchen. So by default, it's going to be the loudest room. So having the insulation in the walls, which is not only insulation, but it's also insulation back plasterboard. On top of that, you couldn't get any more soundproofing if you tried. So another point, because this bedroom, the exit is into the kitchen, fire eggs state that it must have another exit that's not leading straight into the kitchen. So you will see that it's got a full door, external door to the outside, therefore creating another exit point. Which is also done on a thumb lock as well, so people can get out quickly in an emergency. We've got wired internet ports in every single bedroom. We've got TV ports and we've got USB um, plug sockets as well. So this bedroom makes use of the space under the stairs and we've created a walk-in wardrobe there. So consequently, there's more floor space in here because we don't have to accommodate a freestanding wardrobe. So again, we've got wired internet and USB sockets um, in this room as well. As we mentioned before, we've thought where the wardrobe and chest drawers, etc., will go. So the TV point is where we feel the TV is best placed. Feedback we had from a previous property we had from our tenants was that as much as we tried in the last property to put TV points opposite the beds, the layouts just wouldn't allow some of the beds to be directly opposite the TVs. In this property, we really worked hard to do that. So in every room, we've laid out that the TV is opposite the bed. So hopefully we've shown that we've taken on board feedback from tenants and really integrated that into the layout right from the start. Okay, so coming upstairs, we've got motion sensors on the lights as well, like we have downstairs in the kitchen. What we've done is we've made the staircase curve. So we put a new staircase in, which allowed this bedroom to bring, we brought the wall forward here, and it gave it a lot more space. That then allowed, there was, there was a cupboard there and a cupboard there. They've been turned into shower rooms. So this bedroom has its own ensuite shower room. This bedroom has its own off-suite shower room. Um, and that was the best that we could do with this space. So again, going back to planning, a lot of planning goes in right at the initial stages so we saw that obviously where the staircase came up in a straight line it came up like this there was lots of wasted space as landing so rather than think, thinking about what we're wanting the property for we obviously need maximum space so it's about thinking okay where can you gain space for and corridors and hallways are always really wasted yeah then the space is that they don't add any money they don't add any benefit to the tenant, obviously they need to be able to walk through them, but having increased hallway space or walkway space doesn't add any value to the tenant. So by thinking of that and moving the staircase, we were able to give this tenant more space in their bedroom, which they will value. So here we're standing in the room that we created more space in by moving the staircase, which as you will see, means that we can access an ensuite shower room, um, which as already mentioned was covered space before. So in this property, we've tried to put in as many shower rooms such en suites as possible. We've managed to end up with four showers um, and three toilets, which is not everyone gets their own full shower en suite, uh, you know, toilet as well. But it means that it's allowed us that only two people maximum will share a toilet at any one point. So the two rooms upstairs share, two people share one toilet and downstairs they're the only two that share a toilet and a shower room. Everyone else has their own showers. So for, for what we were working with in terms of space, that is the best that we could possibly do. Another thing to say that we, that we always add is blackout curtains because mm. being by the airport, we have a lot of shift workers um, and obviously some people need to sleep during the day. So putting in blackout curtains just, enable, just, just caters for all types of housemate that we might have stay with us. Right, so we're in the next bedroom, um, right next door to the other bedroom that we've just shown you. In here we've put uh, a triple wardrobe in, we've got a chest of drawers, um, we've, we've put in as much as we possibly could, we've put a desk and a chair in. Um, we're trying to really kit out the room so that people have ample storage in here. So this is one of the biggest rooms of the house. Um, it's got a full size double bed in it, whereas the others have got uh, small, double, small doubles in them. Um, 
Whereas it's common for landlords to provide a double wardrobe and a, a three drawer chest of drawers, we like to provide triple wardrobes in every room and a four drawer chest of drawers, as well as a bedside table, which this one's got two bedside tables in here, and a desk and a chair. The reason we, buy, we provide greater storage is because thinking about what we would like our tenants to do, which is keep the rooms tidy and clean and things, and stay here longer. And stay here longer. By providing extra storage enables them to keep things more clean and tidy because if you've got lots of stuff, the last thing you want to do is not have somewhere for it to go. So as much as people might say, oh yeah, we, you can just give them a single, or sorry, a double um, wardrobe and triple chest of drawers. Yeah, but by spending a tiny bit more money, because it's not much more, to be honest, um, we just help the tenant out to be more organised or to be more tidy or to to have more space to, to store their stuff. Also another thing is that we've done all the electrics on separate circuits, so if someone was to um, trip their circuit in this room, it wouldn't affect other people in the household. So not only do we think about practicality of our rooms, we also think about aesthetics. So we design them with the colour schemes and everything tying in, but not only that. So whereas you could have, you could save space and put a, a mirror on the front of the wardrobe, we've decided to make a feature of the mirrors, and so therefore you can see on each of, in each of the rooms, they're on the wall, to make it almost like a picture, to make it more homely, and to fill wall space so it doesn't feel bare. Okay, so now we're in bedroom E, which is our biggest room. It's a couple's room. It has been let to a couple already. There is more wardrobe space in here. They've got a full-on suite with toilet in there as well. Um, extra shelving can go in here because it is one of the biggest, it is, it is the biggest room. As ever, everything's exactly the same. Blackout curtains, USB plug sockets, wired internet, TV ports everywhere. The standard of every bedroom is exactly the same throughout the house. We feel it's a high quality standard. We put wired smoke alarms in every single bedroom as well as in the communal areas. Fire doors and intermittent strips on every single bedroom door as well with all your keyless locks etc. So we feel that the quality is consistent throughout the house as well as the kitchen and the bathrooms all done to a really high standard. So in this room knowing that it's for a couple we've provided extra storage as Ollie said with We've got two double wardrobes, we've got more storage in here. We've also tried to accommodate the fact that people are going to want to get round each side of the bed because if there's two people living here. But the width of the room wouldn't allow us to have a standard opening door. So what we've done is we've had a concertina door, a bifold door, um, so that we can move the bed over, put a shelving unit on this side to create a bedside table equivalent and a bedside table on that side. So we've managed to get it all in and again think about what it will be like for two people to live in this room and not make someone's life a bit, bit more problematic to climb over a bed to get into bed. So the bathroom used to be here and what we've done is we've divided it up to create the ensuite for the couple's room and to create the toilet for the two bedrooms that have their own ensuite shower room. Um, as we said before, all of this side of the building upstairs was cupboards, so this is where the other uh, shower is for that bedroom. So again, we've used the space for what we need it for. So out in the garden we haven't done an awful lot, but we've put new fencing all around, and what was a patio of um, before had an inbuilt barbecue which we took away which obviously then left a hole so what we did is we then took some of the some of the patio slabs that were around the, the shed at the back and we put them here so that they match therefore we save money not having to tile the whole thing and also it doesn't look odd that there's mismatched um, tiles because they're weathered in this, exactly the same way so they look equal. Okay so that concludes our HMO tour um, just to sum up, what we have done is completely just gut the property. We started from a fresh, this was just one whole room, staircase, upstairs with one whole room. It allowed us to do the electrics how we wanted it, put the sound insulation and, and thermal insulation on the outside walls, done all the wiring, everything is brand new, kitchen's brand new. It essentially is new build from the inside. The only thing that, that is original is the exterior walls. Yeah. So it allowed us to design the rooms, everything how we wanted it. We reverse engineered it, so we knew that the furniture was gonna go here, here, and here, so plug sockets could be designed in that way, then the electrics could be done, and we just really thought about everything we possibly could um, ahead of time. One, one tip that I have is that, like I said, we do all our uh, 
room layouts on a computer program which then we print out and obviously by using the same furniture company that we've used previously we know the dimensions we know exactly how everything will fit so what I could then say to the electrician for example was the bed is however many centimetres wide, I would like a plug socket for a bedside table at this point. And so on the diagram that I gave him, which was the floor plan, I even put the measurements of each of the furniture and the measurements of where I wanted the plug sockets. And he was really grateful because he said he doesn't normally get that amount of detail, but it allowed him to be able to work exactly as to what to the specification he knew that we wanted. And it just saved him time, us time asking him to correct things. Um, so yeah, it was a really good thing that I would definitely recommend people do to save time and costs with tradesmen. If you want to ask us any questions or want any more information about how we do our HMOs, um, feel free to contact us. I'll put the description at the end. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm Ollie. And I'm Alicia. And we'll see you soon.